All right, trig lecture 12, 9, 12, 10, uh, right triangle trig. So we're not going to be doing any rotation or anything like that. We're just going to be talking about specifically right triangles. Uh, the student will find the value of a specific trig function given the value of a different trig function. This should ring a bell. This is kind of another little review of stuff we've done in the past. So, you should get this fairly easily, I'm hoping. A little walk down memory lane today. Here we go. Find the value of the indicated trig function. I want to find the value of a sine function if I'm given the value of a cotangent function. I'll show you how I do it. I just draw a little right triangle. I don't worry about scale. Put theta right there. The cotangent is defined as adjacent over opposite. So from here, the adjacent would be 24. The opposite would be 7. And I want to find the sine of theta. So that means I want to find the sine of this angle opposite over hypotenuse. And in order to do that, I've got to know the hypotenuse. So I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to say the sum of the squares of the legs of the right triangle is equal to the square of the hypotenuse, which I'll call C. We can call it any letter we want, but usually kids remember it. A squared plus B squared is equal C squared. Uh, but you can use any, any variables you want. Uh, we can use our calculator and figure this out real quickly. Or you might do it in your head. Uh, that'll be 25. So C is 25. If C is 25, I now have everything I need to evaluate the sine of theta. The sine theta is defined as opposite over hypotenuse. So sine theta is 7 over 25. If cotangent theta is 24 over 7, and we're talking about right triangle tree, okay? We're talking about angles of rotation. There could be another angle involved or infinite number of angles. We're talking about right triangles, so there we are. Hopefully that made sense. I'll do a few more. And, uh, I've got the key here. Let's see if i got it right. Yay. Let's take a look at another one. I want to find the cosine of theta. If the tangent is 4 over 3, well, the tangent is defined as opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm going to draw a triangle. Again, I'm not going to worry about scale. I'm just going to draw a right triangle. I'm going to slap my theta right there. And then the tangent is defined as opposite over, oops, I said hypotenuse. That should be adjacent. My bad. opposite over adjacent. Why I said hypotenuse, we may not have known. The tangent is defined as opposite over adjacent. So the opposite of this angle, the side opposite this would be four units long. The adjacent side would be three. And again, I didn't draw it to scale. I'm just using it as a tool. I can use my Pythagorean theorem and find the uh, hypotenuse if I need to. I'm looking for cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so I do need to find my hypotenuse. So I'm going to say 3 squared plus 4 squared is equal to c squared. That's 9 plus 16, which is 25. If c squared is 25, then c is 5. That gives me the hypotenuse length 5. 3, 4, 5. Very common uh, Pythagorean triplet. So now I want to evaluate the cosine. The cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine theta is 3 over 5. If the tangent of theta is 4 thirds, and we're talking about a right triangle, 
trigonometry. And let's see if I got it right. Yay! Okay, let's take a look at another one. Find the cosecant of theta if the sine theta is radical 17 over 17. So here we go. Now look at cosecant and sine, those are reciprocals of one another. So really I could find the cosecant just by flipping this over. Let's do that. I mean, we get the same answer. But the sine and the cosecant are reciprocals. Remember, I'll, I'll just go ahead and write the reciprocal relationship for you. There's sine theta. If you memorize it in this order, cosine theta, tangent theta, cotangent theta, secant theta, and cosecant theta. By now, I'm sure you have this memorized, but these are the reciprocals of each other. These are reciprocals of each other. These are reciprocals of each other. If you memorize them in this order, these are reciprocals, these are reciprocals, and these are reciprocals. So if you flip this one over, you get this one. If you flip this one over, you get this one, so forth and so on. So I noticed that these were reciprocals, so I'm going to say, well, the cosecant of theta is... 17 over radical 7, radical 17. We have a rational, an irrational number in our denominator. We don't, we don't want that. So I'm going to rationalize the denominator. We learned this back in Algebra 2. In order to rationalize the denominator, I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by that radical. And that will give us in the bottom of the fraction, square root of 17 times the square root of 17 is 17. The top of the fraction is 17 times radical 17. And I see that these are factors, they're multiplied together so I can cancel. You can cancel common factors. And that leaves me with just radical 17. You're, a lot of calculators will do that for you. When I was a kid, our calculators wouldn't do it, so we had to learn how to do it that way. But uh, with these that you checked out from the school, if you have one of these, a TI 30XS, you can just go 17 divided by radical 17 equal, and it'll rationalize that denominator for you. And now I just hope that's right. After I said all that, it'd be embarrassing to have it wrong. Yay! Okie dokie. Yeah, I think I have one more example. I do. We're looking for the secant of theta if the tangent is 4 over 3. Another 4 over 3. Let's see. Opposite over adjacent. So I'm looking for secant. Well, I'll go ahead and draw the right triangle first. Again, I'm not paying attention to scale. I'm just going to draw a right triangle and slap my theta right there. Opposite over adjacent, 4 over 3. We've done this one before. The hypotenuse would have to be 5 because 3 squared plus 4 squared is equal to, if we call it a C or whatever, C squared. 9 plus 16 is 25. And we take the square root of both sides and C has to equal 5 or negative 5, but we're talking about the length of a side, so the negative doesn't come into play. There's no such thing as negative length. So, now we have our triangle. We know the length of all the sides. I want to evaluate the secant function. The secant function is defined as hypotenuse over adjacent. So from this perspective, hypotenuse over adjacent would be 5 over 3, if I haven't made any mistakes. So I can say that the secant of theta is hypotenuse over adjacent, 5 over 3. And there we go. We're given the value of the tangent. We're told that we're doing right triangle trigonometry. And so I drew a right triangle, labeled the sides that I was given, found the, the other side that I needed, and pressed it. Okay. Well, there we go. And let's see if I got it right.
Yay. Okie dokie. This should seem quite familiar. A student will find the value of a specific trig function given the value of a different trig function within the context of a right triangle. You can do this. <coughs> 